Good morning. The band has just played The Lord is Gracious. What uh, an appropriate title, uh, especially for this weekend. A weekend that started last evening. I apologise if there's any lingering odour in the building, but um, there's something fishy going on. Ooh. But we had a tremendous, uh, a tremendous evening last night uh, for those who were able to come, and we look forward again to a time of blessing and worship this morning. For those who were aware last evening, and maybe since then have become aware that, that, that Betty Connell took ill uh, and went off to hospital to be checked out, the good news is that uh, after spending most of the, the night hours in, in the hospital, she's home and is, uh, is safe and well. If you're visiting this morning, it's a, a pleasure to welcome you. It's particularly nice to see Andrew and Murray. Welcome. Uh, we follow your exploits, Murray, uh, with uh, some envy in many cases, and uh, join the Navy and see the world, but it's lovely to have you both here this morning. Um, the flowers this week have been gifted by Billy and Joyce Giffen, and we thank them for them. They're beautiful. Uh, this week also sees uh, an important event uh, in the life of Major Gale. Uh, she and uh, <laughs> oh, she she and Peter are heading off. Oh, I know my brave man, Chris. Uh, she and Peter are heading off for a few days' holiday, and I think is it Wednesday? Yes. It's Wednesday. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, we will. Um, celebrate along with Peter and Gail as Gail celebrates a, a milestone age that ends in a nothing somewhere between <laughs> somewhere between somewhere between five and seven at the front but there you go <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> uh, therefore therefore next week is our uh, first week in Advent and our meetings will be led by Majors Jim and Margaret Prescott and we look forward to that as well However, this morning, uh, it's a pleasure to welcome back to the platform Majors Chris and Linda Connolly. Chris and Linda did our core anniversary online last year, the repair shop. Remember that, Chris? And um, we, felt it, we felt it only appropriate to invite them back this year to do it in person uh, and on the platform in a more traditional way. So it wouldn't be amiss to give them a welcome this morning. No, keep going. That's that. That's that. That's that. <laughs> nice to see you, Murray. I remember seeing you. You were half the size you were the last time I saw you, son. Mind you, so was your father. But there you are. <laughs> there you are. It's lovely for, for Linda and myself to be able to share in this way. And we thank Peter and Gail uh, for the use of their platform. It's not something we take lightly. Uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to be able to do this. And it's a brilliant time to do it. You've really got a brilliant celebration this weekend, haven't you? Yes, Chris? Yes, Chris, that's fine. You've got a brilliant celebration. 129 years of the gospel of Jesus Christ being put out into this community. And it was brilliant coming in here last night. And it was great coming in this morning to hear the buzz. It was brilliant, even in the room, uh, as Gail was praying. Uh, for it to be our 50th. But anyway, they, as, I'm sorry, Gail. <laughs> well, we can, I, I'll, I'll put one in myself because I was uh, at the airport in recent days and the girls at the airport reminded me, although I'm 68 at the minute, I'm going to be 70 next year. Right, so you can, well, I couldn't believe that. You say, Chris, you don't look that age. All right, don't bother, right? That's, <laughs> that's all right. But we're going to have a brilliant time this morning because we are part of the priesthood of all believers. And this morning we are going to be sharing in Clyde Bank's story. And there are going to be members of the congregation here who are going to be speaking in the topic of being in the past, the present, and in the future. Uh, just recognizing the fact that God is gracious, that God is still at work here, and that God still has, as uh, David said in Psalm 139 and verse 5, he still has his hand of blessing upon this core. Amen, brother. 
He still has his hand of blessing upon his school. So we're going to be ministering to one another this morning. And there will be opportunity for you as well who haven't been asked specifically to do anything, to share in your testimony, to share your story. Isn't that fantastic? Well, you're going to wake up in a minute or two, right? You're going to get up on your feet for those who can. And we're going to start with our first song, which is a real golden oldie, Charles Wesley. Uh, 241, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused this pain, for me who him to death pursue. Amazing love, how can it be that thou my God shouldst die for me? And you, on your feet, and let's take it straight through, Graham.
Charles Wesley is sharing his story. And we, all these years later, can sing in it with such a boldness and assurance. And you're going to claim it, the grace of God, for yourself again this morning. We're going to continue in our worship. And the worship band are going to lead us through the next two or three songs. There we are. Ah, so I don't know who's going to be seeing what we're singing. Thank you, Philip. Over to you, sir. I know you've just sat down. However, at least the first two, you can't, sat, you can't sing sitting down. So I would invite you to stand. We're going to sing song 522 in the Salvation Army songbook. If you prefer the songbook in front of you. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray what amazing words to sing on our core anniversary sunday morning so let's stand and sing build your kingdom here
please have a seat. As we just changed the mood ever so slightly, um, we're going to move into our time of prayer and our contribution towards that is a song called Great Is Thy Faithfulness, very familiar. And it's found in Salvation Army Song Book 26. And when we were preparing for this morning, we discussed a whole load of songs. And this was right towards the very, very top because as we look back over the 129 years of this core, I'm sure that we can all testify to God's incredible faithfulness across those times that we have been here. So let's sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Thank you so much to the ensemble for bringing us into that lovely atmosphere just now, having praised and worshipped. And I hope that will give you inspiration for our time of testimony later, time of sharing. Pull the mic down. Nothing ever changes, I know. I don't get any bigger. <laughs> just that way. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's really good, as Chris has already said, it's really good to share with you this morning. And it was good to share in a less formal way last night. We had a good time and we ate far too much, which is just contributing to the, the growth. But never mind, that's one of those things. Um, but it is good to share with you this morning. Uh, we were just working out there that we've each had nine more birthdays. It's not just Gail that has birthdays in between times. We've each had nine more birthdays since we left here in 2013. Um, and it's great to look out on some familiar faces, but also even better to look out on some new faces as well. And so it's great to, to come and see that, the growth that's happening here within the core too. We're going to sing what I suppose you would have in the old days called anyway a prayer song. It's number 760 in the songbook if you'd rather use your songbook. But it is full of prayer. Praying blessed Saviour. 760. Praying blessed Saviour. And of course praying to be more and more like thee. Praying that the spirit may rest like a dove on us. Let's make that a prayer this morning, along with the prayers of the other verses that we are going to sing together. And then I'll speak a prayer on behalf of us all. Let's sing. moment or two of quietness just to bring your own thoughts your own prayers to God just some quietness Father God we come to you this morning on this very special day for this particular core family and we just ask that you will be with each one bowed here today that you will be reminding us of all the blessings of the past, the blessings of the present, and all those things that you still have in store for us as individuals, as members of this family, as a community here within Clyde Bank. And so, Lord, we just ask that you will be to us in our weakness all that we need to do what you would have us do. Lord, we have made prayers in the words of that song, 
prayers which are sometimes easy to say, but not quite so easy to put into practice. But Lord, we ask that you will help us in that, that your spirit will indeed rest upon us and enable us to do what needs to be done in our own individual lives and for, for us here as a core family. Lord, we pray this morning for those who are not able to be here today, those who are in their own homes, perhaps just thinking their thoughts turning to us just now. And we just ask that you'll be with them and that you'll bless them and encourage them in all that they are able to do and all that they would wish they could do in days to come. But Lord, for us today, we just ask that you will indeed be seen and heard in everything that takes place, that your voice will be heard and that we will be spurred in to respond to you, to whatever you have for us to do in your name. Now, Lord, stay with us. Make us very conscious of your presence because we ask it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Let's turn to scripture now to Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, and I'm going to read the first 16 verses. And for the moment, I'm reading from the New International Version. And in the NIV, this particular section is entitled, No Confidence in the Flesh. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence." If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever it was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Amen. May it be so. We're going to take part in a very happy event now. Uh, This is going to be the time where you can come forward and bring your gifts. Um, In fact, no, it's not. There you are. I should have checked this before I actually spoke. That'll be next. That'll be next. Do you love stories? 
Hello, is anybody alive out there? Yes. Do you love stories? Right. I love stories. When I was young, girl, <laughs> thank you, Stuart, and uh, I used to walk down to Paisley Library and take out books that transported me to another world. <clears throat> there were no Harry Potters back then, but we had great adventure stories like Treasure Island, Kidnapped. Is that bringing back some memories, eh? There you are, Ian. David Balfour and Kidnapped, eh? Could you imagine the, what's his name? The Cockney actor. What was his name again? It just came into my mind there. The Cockney actor, very famous. That famous, I've forgotten his name. <laughs> Michael Caine. Michael Caine played David Balfour and Kidnapped in a movie. There you are. That's taken it a wee bit too far. Robinson Crusoe, Oliver Twist. Did any of you read Enid Blyton's books of the famous five and the secret seven? You did, there. Yeah. You're getting quite excited then. Uh, that's it there. They were brilliant. I used to get my torch at night. Uh, we were a poor family. <laughs> like, we're a wee bit poorer than that. <laughs> that's more like it. And uh, I used to share a bed with my brother. And, uh, and he snored. Oh, boy. Why is it that folk who snore are always the first to fall asleep? But anyway, he sleep. But I used to get my wee torch. And do you remember getting the torches with a plastic bit at the front with all the different colours? <laughs> oh, you remember that, Andrew? Did you get that as well? Well, I would be underneath my blanket there when I was supposed to be sleeping, and I'd, and I'd read these stories. I didn't need the book. I'd read them that much that even now I could actually recite some of the stories to you. But I imagined myself as that wee boy joining in all their adventures. And as a dad, I used to make up stories for Karen and for Gillian and for Christopher as they get ready for bed. Their favorite character was one that I made up called Sarah the Dinosaur. So you can see the age they were now when dinosaurs were all the thing that was in. And Sarah the Dinosaur would come into the garden with her big wings and adults were not allowed in the story. Linda and I were never in the story. It was always them going away to some far off land and some far off adventure. They all determined choosing where Sarah might take them that night. We visited the man in the moon and we had to get back because it was at Christmas time and it was cold and Gillian wanted to take him a hot water bottle. <clears throat> there we are. The African jungle, the wild west, and of course we did visited the Saint Dinosaur Land, as well, as well as many other destinations that I wouldn't bore you with this morning. And I'm pleased to say that the tradition has now been passed down through the grandchildren to Joseph, Hope, Emmy, Charlie, and soon to join us our newest addition to the, Con the Connolly clan, Ella. We all love a good story, don't we? And this morning, we're going to be reminded of the phenomenal story of Clyde Bank Court, a story which includes every one of you who is present here this morning and those who may well be listening in. It's a real story, though. It's a real story with real characters, ordinary people who responded to the call of God 129 years ago it started to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people of Clyde Bank. It's a story that will excite you, or it should. It should encourage us. It should embolden us. Not just for today. Not just for the past. But for the future. And it's a story that Colin, Fiona, Peter and Gail are going to share with you. As the meeting continues. But for the next few minutes, Colin is going to share something of the story of the beginnings of the core. Something of the story of those who laid the spiritual foundations which still resonate and inspire us today. Colin. I was just thinking that uh, this is the time of year when the television channels normally show the Charles Dickens classic, uh, A Christmas Carol, or Scrooge as it's more normally known. Well, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> 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 my, 
my reflections on uh, this core have to be the post-war years, the third quarter of the last century, because that's the era that I grew up in. And we were a, a powerful presence in the, in the town in those days. And I have many, uh, many memories of growing up here. Uh, let me paint a picture of just how powerful we were. There was over 200 on the roll. There was 40 in the band. There was, at one time, 70 in the songsters. Uh, 35 in the sing company, 25 in the YP band, over 30 in the home league singers. And we actually, we, we had a, an old age pensioners choir, which numbered about 60 and were so good they could actually do programs on their own. So we were, we were very busy. Um, let, me, let me tell you about the week. Um, Starting on a Monday night was, uh, for me, was boys' club. Uh, no girls allowed, thankfully. <laughs> uh, Tuesday night was corps cadets. Wednesday night was uh, sing company and then eventually songsters. Thursday night was band practice. Friday night was YP band practice, if you were still involved with the YP band, which I was. Uh, Saturday, 6 o'clock at night, was uh, band was on duty at an open air, Chalmers Street, every Saturday. Uh, we'd march up to the front of the hall, and then three Saturdays out of four, there would be a meeting in here. And Sunday started off at 10 o'clock with an open air, followed by a meeting at 11, followed by an open air at 2, followed by a meeting at 3, followed by an open air at 6, followed by a meeting at 7. So we came to Monday and it started all again. But despite all of that, I don't recall a great resentment to that pretty horrendous program, quite frankly because this wasn't just our place of worship. This was our social life. This was where we made lifelong friends and found companionship. So despite the demand, uh, my memories are pretty positive of those days. But were we kingdom building? Well, we thought so, um, although a more jaundiced view might be that uh, a lot of it was about attendance and participation and being with friends. But there are, there are three words which occur to me uh, or in my mind that, are, that were the pillars of the church of my youth. Uh, they all start with D, discipline, deportment, and devotion. Let me explain that. Discipline, we accepted the leaders of the core for what they were. Many of them had been in post for many, many years. The bandmaster had been in post for 50 years. YPSM, I think, did 38. Corcoran Garden did over 30. Um, they were dignified people with real credibility. And we might not have always agreed with what they said or what they did or what they wanted us to do, but we accepted that they were there in authority and with God's blessing. So discipline was an important feature. D for deportment. Most people wear, wore uniform in those days, and that's not a, a dig at anybody who doesn't, it's just a, a matter of fact. Uh, I would say 80, 90% of the Corps wore full uniform. And that was important because uh, none of us, or few of us, had cars. And so we traveled to and from this place in uniform on public transport, or in my case, staying in Linville, I walked six times a day on a Sunday. Um, so our presence in uniform and the way we conducted ourselves was very important because people out there saw the uniform, they knew what we stood for, they knew where we worshiped, and they recognized us by our behavior. The final D was for devotion. Um, there, there was no doubt in my mind there was a commitment. You, you might argue that the commitment's to attendance and uh, because of the discipline, if you like, but we believed that we were doing what we had been brought up to do, and that was to do God's will and serve him through the Salvation Army. Well, as the current song says, those days are gone now and in the past they must remain. I'm not going to sing the rest. Um, but uh, I do hope and pray that uh, those qualities, those pillars, the three Ds, if you like, still have a place in the mission of this court.
and I'm sure they do, Colin. Thank you for sharing something of your memories of the past. <clears throat> I was sharing with Peter and Gail and David last week <clears throat> as we spoke about uh, the meeting this morning and preparation for it. And one of my memories of the past, which was a present for me when I was here, was uh, when they amalgamated the Home League just before we came along with the over-60s, and it just became a friendship club with Phyllis uh, Auckland leading it. And the one good thing about it was it wasn't all ladies. Sorry, Colin. Uh, there was men involved in that wee group, <laughs> the ladies involved. There was a table full of men, of which your dad, Andrew, was a part of it, and uh, David Lachlan, and you were a part of it as well. Great bunch of guys. And I loved sitting at the table with them and listening to their stories. And Bill Laird, if you want to visit Bill Laird, I forget, was he 19 stories up? Aye, 19 stories up. A great big set of binoculars. And they used to say, Chris, they're launching a ship from the shipyards. Do you want to come? So I'd go down and we'd have a wee look and see the, the ship being launched. But one day they were sitting talking about the old days working in the shipyard there. And uh, that was a fantastic story. Of the, we talk about the days, well, look what it was like this morning when we came out. I'm looking out the door just now and it looks nice and dry out there. But the, um, eh, it was a terrible day. And they said in their day, they didn't have anything to cover them. Whether it was raining or not, they still worked on it. And they were talking about this job they had to do. It was a massive eh, engine they were making for Babcock and Wilcox and Renfrew, which was to go to Africa. And when it came to taking this massive engine out, the, the uh, I suppose the place it was being... A shed. It was a big shed though, wasn't it, Hen? It was a big one, really big one. And uh, so when they f went to do that, they found it was about three quarters of an inch the wrong side of the door. And they had a person, a young lad in charge, who uh, had come direct from university. And he began to lose it. He thought, oh no, this is, this is it. I'm going to get a sack. This is a multi-million pound project. And uh, Davy and that were talking about, well, what did we do? We said, we, th we went away and we thought, we went, down to, we went down to the beach. And I'm going, the beach? Clyde Bank. There was a wee bit of sand down at the, 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 the water side there. And they said, these guys who, I, don't, I think most of them maybe left school, certainly before they were 13, probably, you know, uh, never had been to university, Glasgow University, but certainly had learned plenty in the University of Life. And these men stood there, these ordinary guys for Clyde Bank, and they said, eh, how did the Egyptians, how did the Egyptians move the stones out into the desert? They're going, what? And they said, no, how did they move the stones for where they were out into the desert? He says, well, they had hundreds of slaves and they had ropes and they cut down trees and they got them to the same size and they put them under, they got a big big massive poles with these big strong guys levering them up got them onto the poles the slaves dragged them on and they just ran about in front and that's how they got them out into the desert well what are you talking about that for well why can we not do that here why can we not go to the fitters Look, we've got two cranes out there and we'll get them to make two massive big crowbars we'll get the cranes to just jammy up the and we'll get steel bars and that's what these guys from Clyde Bank did. I don't know exactly the year they did it, but there they were, ordinary guys, saying, what did the Egyptians do to get these? Fantastic guys. These were the type of people, but the backbone of this core. Just lovely, lovely people. I just thought it was a lovely story to share. Right, enough my waffle. <clears throat> It's now going to be, it is this time, isn't it, Stuart? It's now going to be, yes, thanks for the thumbs up, brother. It's a time for you now to be able to bring forward your gifts uh, for those in the community who need it the most. And we're going to watch a video. It's a video which has the Be A Star uh, thought on it. That's going to be there. But you're going to be listening to some music which incorporates the carol, Candlelight Carol. Now, I don't know if you just, is somebody going to meet somebody to get the, the gifts or anything? Hey, Ress, who? Oh, come on, girls, up you come then. There you are, right? So as you hear the, the as you watch the video and as you hear the music, please come forward with your gifts.
Let's share in a prayer together. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you that in the midst of our worship of you this morning, that this core family can take the time out to think about those within this community who are in need. And we pray indeed, Heavenly Father, for the families and particularly for the children who will receive these gifts, that they will feel something of the love which is behind it and the kindness which is behind it. And we pray indeed, Heavenly Father, that at some time in this Christmas, they'll give a thought for the child Christ. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Fiona is now going to come and share something of the story of the present day core, the spiritual program, the vibrant ongoing ministry within this community. So as Chris says, I've been asked to share some of the, our Clyde Bank story as to where we currently are, the present. Now, given that for the past two core anniversaries, I've been asked to talk about the past, and as much as I dislike public speaking, and I'm sure you're all fed up hearing me too, it's quite a relief to talk about the present and not the past for a change. Although if Colin says he's the ghost of Christmas past, I don't know as co-treasurer if that makes me Scrooge. <laughs> We can't discuss the past, present or future without focusing on our five mission priorities. So let's start post-COVID, which we did talk about a year ago as well. We've slowly managed to resurrect some of the activities, even if not in the way we knew them before lockdown, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Personally, I feel that one of the best things to have happened to our Corps this year, I'm sure you all agree, is that we're now commanding officers after a long and tiring time without. Obviously and thankfully our Sunday worship has recommenced in this current format and it's just great to have Peter and Gail to lead, here to lead us each week. It's also been lovely to have welcomed several new transfers into our core in recent months along with new people who have come to join our worship and to welcome back other members of the core family who are solely feeling confident enough to come and worship with us once again. Our YP work has recommenced, having mainly started on a Friday night with our Notion Kids Own programme. This ministry reaches out to children, some known to the congregation here, but many others who attend regularly on a Friday night that we may never actually see here on a Sunday. But Friday night is their church. During the evening, the children are all served a meal, nor standing for no one stays hungry. And along with the games and time to have fun and be themselves, there's also time to sit and learn, a Bible, uh, learn and listen to a Bible story. Many of these children have never even heard of the Bible, far less know of any of its contents and what it means to us as Christians. The Teenage Cell Group has recommenced as well using a Youth Alpha series and it's great too that we also now have an area for the young people to join us on a Sunday in the back of the hall as they're doing just now. You may think this is all just kids playing games but actually there are packs made up by Philip each week for them to use that are relevant to the meeting and what is going on. Core Bible study led by Peter and Gail has started up again and after a very, lo after a very long break and there's still at least one house group regularly meeting to study God's word as well. All are welcome to join in a hall-based Bible study group which meets every fortnight. I'm sure during lockdown many people here received calls or messages from your carers and the carers continue to look out for members of the core and ask how we are on a regular basis. I'm sure this was and is appreciated by our core. I know it is by me. Colin and Sand have also reinstated the welcome sergeants on a Sunday morning but we do hope that you've noticed there's always someone around when you arrive at the hall to say hello and welcome you to the army each week. We also have the coffee fellowship function once again, as it had done before. You might have noticed in recent weeks we're actually using real cups. So that's part of actually of our commitment to the environment as well, of caring for God's planet. The very welcome addition to our uh, coffee fellowship is um, obviously Gail's homemade cakes. I'm sure we all agree with that too. Thank you, Gail. I don't know what they're going to do next Sunday, though. Um, <laughs> There are a limited number of people on this Coffee Fellowship rota, and we could always do with more help, male and female, I have to say. So if this is something you feel you might get involved in, please see Caroline, as I'm sure she'd be delighted to add some more names to what is at present a rather short team of helpers in this way. More recently, the Corps has finally appointed a Community Programme Development Manager, which is a post that was just about to get advertised way back in 2020, literally just before COVID hit. Working alongside Peter and Gail, the community manager, who I'm sure you are aware is David, has already been in contact with various community groups in the area, attended the recent Clydebank Churches Together planning meeting, 
contacted local schools, visited some of our care homes, and between them all have started up our warm welcome winter cafe, which has already borne fruit in many ways. This activity couldn't function as, along with Peter, Gale and David without the willing group of volunteers who are supporting and helping out on a Wednesday. And we're grateful to each and every one of you here who do participate in this way. Please continue to pray for this venture. Another activity excuse me, that is soon to recommence for the first time since pre-lockdown is that of Christmas caroling. The message of Christ's birth needs to be heard and what a great opportunity we have to be able to share this message through Christmas caroling. We're grateful to Western Bartonshire Council and to Clyde Shop Centre for allowing us the opportunity to do this throughout Advent. We're also running, as has been said, the Have a Heart and Be a Star activity at the front door again in aid of our Christmas gift appeal, which many of us have just participated in today. Even during lockdown, we managed to keep our Christmas gift appeal going. And now, post-COVID, along with the dire cost of living crisis, the need goes greater and greater every year, but financial and human resources are few. We need people to carry out these tasks. In addition to volunteers for the front door, we also require folks to collect whilst the band plays carols in the shopping centre. Please see me as soon as possible if you can give up an hour or two on a Saturday to help in this way. We're very grateful for your help here too and for the band in participating in this way. Maintenance work in the building continues to be carried out in the background, a lot of what most of us will never be aware of. And obviously there's a lot of work needing done, but due to financial constraints, it can't happen as quickly as we may like, unfortunately. Thanks to all you people who work tirelessly in the background looking after our core, our core building as best that we can for now. Another thing that our officers have started again in the past few months is that of producing a weekly newsletter, keeping us aware of upcoming dates and events at the core and within the division, but also giving us prayer points regarding members of the core or specific situations or activities for us to concentrate our prayers on during the week. It's distributed via email on a Saturday night, along with a few hard copies printed out for anyone to pick up on a Sunday. Thanks, Gail and Peter, for reinstating this once again and for keeping us up to date in this way. I feel as if a core, we have come a long way since pre-COVID times. It's not always been easy, and no one ever said it would be, but we have to believe, God, we have to believe that we are, where, we are where God wants us to be just now. I'm sure there's plenty of other things that many of us would like to see happen at the core, but perhaps we just have to be patient and believe these things will happen in his time, if that's what's right for our church. We hold a great deal of tradition in our core, as Collins already said, which shouldn't be ignored or forgotten about. Many, many people have come to know Christ through the years as a result. As we now enter our core's 130th year, we also look forward by building in the past, working in the present, and planning for the future, pressing on toward that goal of eternal life that is shared in our scripture reading. I pray for our core going forward, I hope you do too, as we do indeed build in the past and the present, that we will be the church that God wants us to be. It's great what we've accomplished since lockdown. Things might not be perfect, we might want some other stuff done in another way, but we have to continue to flourish as individuals and as a core, and by knowing God, by making him known, by loving God and serving, loving others, as he has commanded each one of us to do. Thank you, Fiona. Now, I did say at the beginning of the meeting there's an opportunity to give testimony. Well, there will be, but what I'm going to do is issue a wee challenge. Don't share your testimony with us. After the meeting, share it with someone outside of the core. Share something of your story. I'm just conscious of the time here, and I want us to be able to hear what Peter and Gail have got to say, which is quite important, and for myself and Linda, just to bring the whole meeting to its conclusion. But speaking about the past, speaking about the present, what's our focus? Our focus surely is Jesus Christ. Important as programs are, the focus has got to be him. That's the focus. And the band are going to help us to do that. Before Peter and Gail come and speak to us about their vision for the future, we're going to remind us nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ can save us.
Good morning. Like all good speakers, my talk has been verified by the boss. <laughs> She's checked, made sure, and leaves me to do all the talking. I just do what I'm told, okay? The future. It is difficult for us to look forward from this point in time and see what will happen. If we were running a business, we would look at making a two-year plan or perhaps even a five-year plan, working out the direction that we would go in. If we were really bold, we would even think about making a 10-year plan. We are, however, not a business. We are a church. A congregation of people who mostly have given their hearts to Jesus Christ. Because of this, we need to look forward through very different eyes. As has been shared, when we step out, we step out with our faith. Our hearts on fire for our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and that is what we share. Even the best laid plans for us as a congregation are dependent upon us as a community of believers trusting in God in every possible way. In the future, what will our church look like? In the future, who will be serving God faithfully at Clyde Bank Hall? In the future, what new faces will we see worshipping with us? This is the joy of living and serving in an unknown future. It is not something that we need to fear, but on the contrary, it is something that we need to embrace. The more we trust in God and just allow him to do his will through us, the more this church will grow. The world has changed, and it's not just because of COVID. People today, young and old, generally engage or disengage with the church in a very different way from the way that we have may have found our way in this congregation or others. Their Christian journey will be very different to our Christian journey. But that's not saying that our Christian journey cannot be a very significant part of their Christian journey. We need to do more than just feed the hungry, clothe the cold and shelter the homeless. People would need not just to know who Jesus is, but also the difference that Jesus can make in their lives. What we say and how we live needs to be very clear and consistent with what we say and how we live our lives. The future is simple, but it's also a little difficult at the same time. The future is reassuring, yet a little bit scary at the same time. Don't worry about the five years or the ten years from now. Honestly, don't even worry about the two years from now. The future of this core starts today and flows into tomorrow. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. Micah 6 8. This is God's challenge to us to live a life of faith that is seen in our actions. These are the values that we place on ourselves as we go into the community. To know Him. And to make him known, this is Philippians 3.10. This is our mission. For us to make him known to people outside this building, we need to know him ourselves. The future starts now. The future starts now. Clyde Bank Corps. <clears throat> what a story. We've just been reminded of 
the sacred covenant, really, that the founders of this core family made with God 129 years ago. And it's a sacred covenant which is alive and is relevant today. A sacred covenant which continues under the spiritual leadership of Peter and Gail and all of you who consider yourselves part of the family of this core. You are a vibrant, relevant, worshipping and serving community of believers in Clyde Bank. You are the modern day disciples with a clear mission to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ heading into the next 129 years as Gail shared with us in her prayer before we come in to take the meeting. It's a remarkable story. We tend to think that all the remarkable stories happen in America or maybe they happen down south. But it doesn't happen here. Can I tell you, it's only nine years since we've left here and there are people here who we're meeting for the first time. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. God has laid his hand of blessing upon you. And the scripture portion that we chose for this morning was from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the epistle of joy. The epistle where he actually shares his own story. Well, not overhype the past, but as Paul did learn from it, how did he put it in Philippians 3 and 4? It's true that I once relied on all that I had become. I had a reason to boast and impress people with all my accomplishments, more than others, for my pedigree was impeccable. That's quite a statement to make. That, sorry, I'm reading from the Passion paraphrase here, not from the uh, NIV. And I just want to share a wee bit more of his story in uh, verses 7 and 8. Yet all of, all, all of the accomplishments that I once took credit for I've now forsaken them, and I regard it all as nothing compared to the delight of experience, G experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. To truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past. Let it go. How many times do we allow the past indiscretions to interfere with our present. That's how the devil can get to us, you know. That's how he gets to us. Brings up the faux pas of the past to us. To rob us eh, of that security, that spiritual security that Peter was alluding to. He suddenly realized, yes, I'm from a tribe of Benjamin. You know, he was really... <laughs> he was really going for it and telling him what he thought here, giving him all his credentials. But he goes on to say this. My passion is to be consumed with him, not to cling to my own righteousness and keeping the law. But I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. But I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me. I do not depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Fasten your heart to the future. Fasten it. Keep doing what you're doing in the present. But put your focus on Christ Jesus himself. So let all of us who are fully mature have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us advance together to reach this victory prize following one path with one passion. Hmm. 
Don't let anything hold you back from fulfilling the promise that God gave to you and the promise that you made to God. If there's anything holding you back from fulfilling that covenant, let it go now. We're going to bring uh, this part of the meeting. Before we go into our closing song, uh, to our conclusion, Linda's going to sing. I hope you've got your voice left, darling. And she's going to sing the paraphrase of Psalm 139. And the first verse says this. You are before me, Lord. Yep, you've been behind. And over me you have stretched out your hand. Such knowledge is too wonderful me, too high to grasp, too great to understand. Clyde Bank Corps, continue with passion. Keep your focus on Jesus Christ and you will fulfill the will of God and you will complete or be part of the completion of the story of Clyde Bank Corps. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this hour of soul of worship, of praising you, glorifying your name, and thanking you, Heavenly Father, for your hand of blessing upon us. May we continually acknowledge the blessing you have for each of us, and may we acknowledge the part that you have chosen for each of us too, to fulfill your will and purpose within this community. So, Heavenly Father, will you bless Peter and Gail 
as they lead these lovely people during the present time and situation. And may they find, in particular this community fit, that within these walls here, the answer to some of the difficulties and problems which they face in life. So bless the ministry of this core family. Thank you for the past and for the blessings of the presence and for your unfailing presence with them in the future. And now, in Christ alone, our hope is found. He is our light, our strength, our song. He is the cornerstone. He's the solid ground, firm through the fiercest doubt and storm. What heights of love and depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Let's have a really good sing to bring our worship to its conclusion. Let's stand together and we'll sing it. There's an interruption to each verse. There's an interruption to each verse. We'll watch an inter no interruption, an interruption. No interruption. I wish Graham would have put in his teeth this morning, but there we are, that's fine. There's an introduction to each verse, so just follow Graham's lead. <laughs> now a benediction. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. 
And all the saints said, Amen. Amen.